these resonating sounds have existed for centuries. They have the power to evoke a gamut of feelings. Anxiety, joy, remorse, pleasure, pain, all at the same time. These sounds amalgamate to create what we know as Carnatic music. While this form has traversed an eventful journey, it has also evolved to become an integral part of our cultural ethos. But what weaves the fabric of Carnatic music? What is Carnatic music? Carnatic music, the word means Karneshu Atati Iti Karnataha. The music, any music that pleases your ears is Carnatic music. Um, Carnatic music is completely a distinct sound in terms of the way the melody moves, uh, the way the melody has an identity when it moves. Well, I think uh, the core of Carnatic music, as I see it, is the bhava element. Bhava is normally translated as emotion, but it is not to be confused with the emotion which you experience in, our, in your everyday life, the Navarasa, as you call it. The only emotion connected with uh, music is an emotion of joy pure, unalloyed joy. When we talk about the core of Carnatic music, I have uh, two things very importantly to say. One is the bhakti, the other is the ragas. Bhakti, because Carnatic music is mainly vocal based, and there are compositions again, which have lyrics, and these, these lyrics express a lot of bhakti. So mainly Carnatic music is an expression of bhakti. The second aspect, very important aspect is ragas. Ragas are formation of various emotions, expression of emotions through notes. While the bhava, the bhakti, or reverence towards gods and goddesses create both the core and boundary of this form of music. It is the swara, the notes that create the basis of a raga or a composition in Carnatic music. To understand the notes, we have to talk about an octave. So in an octave, where the basic note starts with the first note, sajjam, sa, and then the uppermost sa. Between these two sajjams, there are 12 notes. This is common to both the Hindustani and the Carnatic system. And we, when we want to call the names, we say sajjam, rishabam, gandharam, madhyamam, panchamam, Daivatam, Nishadam, and the upper octave surgeon. But when we sing, like the solfa syllables, we sing it as Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Da, Mi, and then surgeon. So let me sing all the 12 notes. Sa, Re, Re, Ga, Ga, Ma, Ma, pa, da, da, ni, ni. After this, sa, sa, the higher octave of the first note starts. So we have covered one octave which has 12 notes. The way these notes glide and oscillate within a definitive structure to evoke emotions lay the foundation of a raga. On it, in construct and context, each raga carefully adds or omits notes to express an identity that is unique to itself.
the very core uh, for uh, classical music is the raga and uh, we see it is actually the evolution of our music is the evolution of the uh, raga sense <coughs> First raga is not a vague idea. It's a very definitive idea. But it is not an, it is not an idea that is constructed out of logic or rationality. It's a body of melodic movements. It's a bald body of aesthetic sounds. Now the question is, how does that body come together? That's the tough part. The body comes together because through a period of time, other than the fact that they have certain swaras and they, you know, they have they certain melodic units, but mel melodic units have no utility in, in art unless there's something called emotion. And every raga has a mood. It has a certain format, of course, a, a, a kind of a, shall we say, a swarupa. For every raga, there is a jiva swara. There are jiva swaras, I would say, and you have to touch on them, you have to dwell on them, and you have to know what is right in a raga, to hold the note, or to, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, like, um, it's Kalyani, okay? Immediately you know. This is Rishabha Priya. You know, but the, you have to show it, my guru used to say again, I have to quote her so many times because everything that I have kind of got into my system is from her. Carnatic music, it is said by the maestros, is a body of music that is embellished with intricate compositions. Various composers added their own beads with different hue and texture to the garland called Carnatic music. Its present form, as we recognize today, is the amalgamation of the works of these great composers. And then when the compositions came into existence, particularly uh, through uh, Anamacharya, Chetraya, Purandaradasa, and later on Thyagaraja Swami, Shama Sastri, and Muttaswami Dikshadar, these people composed their kriti, so to say, their songs. Again, prayer to uh, Lord Almighty. <laughs> Having had a vision of uh, the raga forms, and it is through these uh, compositions, they crystallized the form of the ragas. <laughs> father of Carnatic music, Purandra Dasa, who belongs to the 15th century. So I should say the Carnatic music itself took a definite shape during his period. After that comes the golden period during the 18th century when we have the Trinity composers, Saint Tyagaraja, Muthuswami Bhikshitar and Shyama Sastri. The Kritis and Kirtanas the compositions started very seriously from the Trinity period. Mostly, most of the compositions that we render today in a concert is from the Trinity uh, compositions. Most composers left a mudra, you know, like uh, Shyama Sastri used Shyama Krishna and uh, Muthuswami Dikshitar used Guru Guha. Thyagaraja, of course, used Thyagaraja. And uh, Papanasam Shivan used Ramadasa. 
So there are uh, certain um, terms that each composer has clung on to to uh, give that mudra and to show that it is his composer, uh, uh, that, and to show that it is his composition. The repertoire of compositions in this music is vast and they're extremely important. Composition is what constructs the core of Carnatic music. Varnams, Krithis, Kirtanas, Javalis, Padams, Tilanas, all that are diverse compositional manifestations give the music its identity. But what are these forms exactly? Any Carnatic music performance is, cent is centered on one compositional form, which is the Kirtana or Krithi as referred to. All, comp all concerts will predominantly have a lot of Kirtanas. Kirtanam comes from the word Sankirtanam, which is basically devotional music. So there is not so much importance to the melody. It is the lyrics which are very predominant. Varana is a slightly more, uh, slight, very different kind of a composition with a very different aesthetic melodic uh, flow, less lyrics, more extensions of vowels, suddenly swara passages in between, so they're very different. The pada is of course very popular in dance, they call it, we also call it the padam, uh, which is completely love and erotic poetry, very very sensual, very usually centered in a slow tempo. Uh, those are also rendered in concert, but you probably have one padam. A javali is more, a lot of uh, erotic, erotic lyrics, uh, more like frolic, and a lot of teasing, and it's a lot of fun. And they run sung, they probably you have only one in a concert. A tilana is like, like in Bharatanatya, you have a tilana that concludes the, comp, uh, the, the concert. But the majority of compositions are kirtanas. They are the body of a concert as present. Another unique form of rendition is the ragam, tanam, pallavi. A form that begins with melodic fluidity and ends with a rigid rhythmic structure. Its execution highlights the aspect of spontaneity and improvisation. It is often considered as a true test of a musician's technical and musical abilities. Every inch of the Carnatic music uh, format has a scope for improvisation. The alapana, take the alapana. Improvisation can be an actual dem demonstration. Improvisation can be there in the thought process. And when you concentrate on the raga, it's of course the manodharmic aspect, the creative, the imaginative aspect. And there lies the challenge for every artist. This improvisation happens before and after a composition, as a prelude and then after, after the composition uh, with the rhythm as Kalpana Swaras. Within the structure is embedded the possibility of singing an alapana. You sing an alapana, you sing an arval, you sing a kalpana swara. Nerval is very simple. It's like picking a line from a composition, uh, which has a certain melodic structure, and then saying, I'm going to play with the melody, but I'm going to use the words that are there in those lines. Because when we sing the Nerval, which is uh, an on-the-spot improvisation of one particular sentence in the composition, you know, you're not supposed to uh, change the uh, seating, or shall we say, where each um, 
part of the lyric comes. Like I'll give you an example. Hmm. Ver ani o mamar kar kamala kuru na gay tavar ar muga ver mar o mamal kar kamala. Now I'm going to sing a nerval, okay? Kuru na gay tavar ar muga ver. Can you see how uh, we don't move the words, but we uh, change the way we sing the words to the nerval, but at the same time conscious that you're not moving too much away from this seating position of each of the lyrics. <laughs> What binds Carnatic music together is its Tala system. It is the Tala system that lends rhythm to the melody and gives the form a sense of movement. Layam na or rhythm beats in the layam on the Ella country impressago. Yenana and the heart beat mari tick 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 in and the sound mari other beat. And the beat on the Ella Rigger beat in La Ella Megadia. Tala is a very important aspect, and this rhythmic aspect has to be uh, kept to the gate. You know, like Takademi, 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 Takademi. That has to be the gate through the composition. Our Sangeet Shastra has uh, listed 108 talas. It's quite a, a challenging uh, number. But then uh, the talas in vogue are maybe much fewer. We have uh, Mishra Chap, Mishram, Khantam, Sankirnam, Thriputta Talam. And Adi Tala is the most common tala. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And of course, Rupakam, then Mishra Chapu, Takkitta, Takka Dimmi. And then we have Takka, Takkitta, which is Khanta Chapu or Jampatala. I would uh, always emphasize that uh, the percussionist's role is extremely important. Be it an Upapakwadiyam like Morsing or Ghatam or Ganjira or the Murdangam. In Carnatic music, the role of the uh, Mridangam player is much more. He is not only a complementary of companies, but he is a constructive, creative, positive factor in the success of the concert. The beauty of the Mridangam is that, and he has always said that, Bharata said that the most what you call, flexible instrument for, can be used for any situation in the run. And it is full of tonal what you call, colors. And the bass is on the, on the left. Ta, ti, dom, nam. Like that, no? See the dynamics play, the, as you teach you can do that. The, with the, how the inflection goes in the voice, you can get the instrument. The flow of the talang, utari, kida. Lam is a chapu, call it chapu. Talang, utari, kida, rika, chaka, tari, kida. Riddum, tari, kida, rika, chaka, tari, kida.
While Mridangam holds a special place of significance in Carnatic music, there are several other instruments like the veena, the flute, the violin that complement the form. Carnatic music along its journey of evolution has embraced numerous different facets. The concept of Bani, or a school of thought, is an aspect that it has nurtured and preserved over time. Bani is characterized by several factors. The artist's approach to a composition, expression, emotion and technique. The Lalgudi Bani itself focuses a lot on bhava and aesthetics. In whatever we do, even when we approach a very intricate laya pattern, it is always soaked in melody. You, you find that Emma Samma's Bhani, it has a lot of bhakti and devotion to the songs. The, the, the attention to detail is simply uh, immaculate. And while Samangudi's Bhani is, is more, uh, it's, it's kind of uh, what we call the Sarvala Guru, uh, while singing the Swara Kalpanas, the, while we sing the Kalpana Swaras. An intensely personal aspect of Carnatic music is about surrendering oneself to the divine. It is about submerging yourself into the unknown, the realm of spirituality. They say it has the power to elevate the soul. But what does it mean and how does one attain it? You know, many times when you sing, uh, the moment takes over. Like you get in, you get into the lyrics so much that uh, I don't exist anymore. I feel a kind of an energy, uh, and then uh, you choke with emotion. You're not able to sing further. Then you stop, and then you continue. When you sing uh, alapana, no, and in tune with the shruti, the swara, tanpura, or what, what is it? This is this is the area where you get really get lost in the music. There you forget your breathing, you forget your tonal flow up or down, or you don't know. You don't know. The ideas come, ideas are carried, ideas are, they are finished, and then when the ideas come out as a finished product, you have no other role than to enjoy it. Tyagaraja uh, Swami once said, Yilagani Vivarimpalenu, I cannot describe this to you. Swanu Bhavavedhyame, you have to experience it yourself. Carnatic music has stood the test of time, and the reverence for the form will always keep it alive. There are three generations after me who are performing and ready to perform. Three generations, not one, but three. And they are extremely talented, uh, very capable musicians. So there's no, I think we are probably at a good phase. But that doesn't mean we should sit back and do nothing. I think there's a lot to be done in terms of uh, how we can present this art to a lot of people, ex ex you know, increase the exposure. Whatever the changes, it has always been in a positive way. Uh, you see musicians uh, enjoying the, the support of Rasikas and the media nowadays, it's playing a very, very crucial role. The musicians of today also have got that high degree of intellect to take on this challenge the vocal prowess, virtuosity, and every department you see there is a tremendous improvement when you compare uh, today's artists with uh, the earlier generation of uh, artists. And what with uh, the intellectual capacity of uh, the modern day artists and also their, uh, their, the, the aesthetic apparatus which they have built, uh, I believe that there is indeed a great future for classical Carnatic music.